Welcome to the Vaser booth. This is uh, SID Display Week 2024. And this week, we have the new Display HDR 1.2 spec that we have updated. This is the first major update to the Display HDR spec in five years. And we are very proud to be demonstrating the first display that is certified with uh, Display HDR 1.2. So, um, what's new? Here. A tremendous amount has changed with Display HDR 1.2. So, like I say, first big update in five years. What we've done is we've taken all of the existing tests from the version 1.1. We've updated the color gamut. Uh, it, we've updated the bit depth requirements. We've changed some of the test patterns as well uh, to remove the 100% black background that we used to use with a 10% patch. We now have a background image that we put the test patch on top of. In addition to that, we've uh, increased the bit depth requirement, particularly for the Display HDR 400 level. So the 400 level on the bit depth requirement is now up from 8 bit to 8 plus 2, which is the same as the other Display HDR performance tiers. The color gamut has significantly increased for Display HDR 400. So in the old 400, the version 1.1, it was only an sRGB color requirement. It's now a DCI-P3 requirement, just like the original requirements that we had for all of the other Display HDR performance tiers. But simultaneously, we have updated the color spec for DCI-P3 on the 500, 600, and 1000 tiers to match what we did have at the 1400 level. So those have increased to 95% DCI-P3. We've also changed the test pattern. So we have an 8% square on, the, yeah, an 8% with a background. And the background is a star field so that we get a, a, all of the zones in a local dimming array are illuminated rather than being perfectly black. We've also significantly increased the accuracy and the range for which we're testing on the luminance and white point accuracy. So what this test does is we, we project a gray image, white through gray images on the screen at luminance levels that used to be from five nits to 50% of the performance of the display. And we have increased that tenfold by going all the way from one nit to basically 100% of the display performance. And with that, we've also tightened up the tolerance requirements. And you can see the new Delta ITP tolerance requirements. So for, for one nit and five nit test, we have a Delta ITP of 20. And then for 15 nits, we have a Delta ITP of 15. And then for all of the other tests, the Delta ITP requirement is 10 or less. So that's a significant tightening by about a third from the original tolerance targets. Also, we have added several new tests. We've added a 1D and 2D local dimming contrast ratio test. So previously, we had used active dimming, which required two different images. You had one image for your bright white, a different image, a checkerboard image, that we used for the black level. And we compared those as active dimming. And, and we said active because we allowed the system to adapt the backlight to the content. And so you could adapt from a super bright white scenario to a very dark shadow detail scenario and measure the black there. And then we would calculate the dynamic active dimming ratio. In version 1.2, in addition to keeping that test, we add new tests that have a one-dimensional local dimming and a two-dimensional local dimming backlight. And we have two different patterns, one for displays at the 400, 500, and 600 levels that require 1,300 contrast ratio for the 400 level, 7,000 and 8,000 as the contrast ratio requirements using the 1D local dimming pattern. For the two-dimensional local dimming pattern, which is exciting because this is our first time with Display HDR 1000 that we are now mandating the requirement that you have a two-dimensional array, a, a full array local dimming in the two-dimensional for um, Display HDR 1000 and above. And with that, 
we have this in incredible requirement of 30,000 to one contrast ratio with the uh, Display HDR 1000 and 50,000 to one for the 1400 tier. HDR is one of the most uh, awesome things with, with displays, right? And you want to be supporting it in the best possible yeah. way. And, and, and to talk about how awesome and exciting and how the whole industry is engaged is at Display Week now, we are proud to announce that we have 3,000 certifications of displays. So laptops and monitors, we've had 3,000 different products certified to the Display HDR standard. Um, 3,000, uh, this is just a NASA sample. It looks really amazing. So some of these displays coming out are just mind-blowingly awesome and you right. want to support them correctly in terms of the whole spec, the connectors and yeah, everything? Yeah, I mean, the, well, beyond the connectors, I mean, the connectors are really the display port standard, the USB-C standard, and, and that's handled in different work groups, and, and those are connector and protocol standards groups. What, what we've really been focused on, and this logo program here, is very much focused on the front of screen standard. So, it's, it's kind of independent of the connector that you're using to drive the display. These are all just the actual light coming out of the screen and, and the evaluation and standards and logo programs is for front of screen performance. And uh, how do uh, the, the, com the, co uh, the companies that want to certify their displays for this, how do they test, how does it get tested to get the stamp that says okay, oh. it passed? Yeah, so uh, the, the policy that we have in place is we require that the first two devices from every manufacturer get validated in-house at the manufacturer and also at an independent third-party test house so that we can verify that their in-house verification system and certification system is reliable and compliant to the CTS that we've built and as validated by a third-party independent um, test house. And so once you have done that, then we enable the OEMs to continue certifying future products in-house. So how did you, uh, uh, in the industry and with your with the members and everything, decide for the spec? Uh, is it a long discussion? <laughs> it was a very long discussion. <laughs> so this is our first major update in five years. Um, we've been thinking about this, um, what do we need to update the standard with, and really looking at what's happening in the display industry. You know, certain improvements in color have happened, things have improved with local dimming. So there's new technology being developed all the time, but over a period of five years we've observed you know, there's a certain set of things that we could improve. And over the last 15 months, we've had a very intensive discussion with all of the members involved. I mean, 30 to 40 different member companies involved on a, a weekly or bi-weekly basis, debating how do we go about changing the standard and how do we develop display <coughs> hardware specs that are just ideal for the new technologies available in displays. And, um how do, what does it cost to get one of these stickers on the display when, if somebody wants to sell? Is it, oh, oh. so, well, there's no cost for the certification. Well, there's no charge from VASA for the certification. If you need to go to a test house, the test house will charge for however many hours it takes them to run through the set of test procedures, and, and they will charge at whatever their rate is for testing. The, the usage of the logo is limited to VASA members. So there is an annual membership fee for a company to join VASA. But other than that, this is a fully open public standard. We publish the, the specs, we publish the test tools. You could go use the test tools for free, test it on hardware. Um, so you wouldn't be able to license the logo unless you're a VASA member but you can download the tools and the CTS. And, can they and mention with words that they passed that test? <laughs> so they, they wouldn't be allowed to use the logo, they wouldn't be allowed to quote the, the VASA, but you know, some people may work around that, yes. All right, uh, so uh, HDR is for the next monitors, computer monitors, 
laptop displays? Oh yeah, absolutely laptops. I mean, all of these laptops that we have on display are display HDR uh, based laptops. So this laptop here is actually, you know, a very exciting example of uh, a, a manufacturer who has adopted all of our front of screen standards. So this laptop has the um, Display HDR True Black 600 certification. It has the VESA Adaptive Sync 240 certification, and it has the VESA Clear MR 9000 certification. So all three of the standards that we developed in the Display Performance Metrics Workgroup are, are in use on that display. And uh, some of these displays. Oh yeah, yeah. This this is a uh, this is another uh, display that has both adaptive sync and clear MR. It's also an HDR display. Um, this one here is uh, an HDR display. I don't know for sure if this one's been certified, but this is a uh, an HDR 6K display from Dell. And then this is uh, an OLED based um, ASUS ZenBook laptop using a Meteor Lake processor. So here at the Display Week 2024 is a bunch of discussions with the display makers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So a lot of the display makers come visit the booth, discuss with us. But a lot of the engagement is in the, in the meetings that we host on a bi-weekly basis where we're discussing the new standards and, and the technology that drives us. Mm you know, forwards and better displays in the future. And this uh, event, there's so many amazing new displays that are being shown. Indeed. Kind of R&D that might be coming out right. one, two years later. Oh, yeah. Uh, they yeah. need to be following okay. the there, I mean, there's, there's technology at this show that is probably five to ten years out. Uh, so it's, it's an interesting mix of retail-ready products or re in-retail products all the way out to perhaps ten years out to the future with some of the conference papers and discussions.